Okay. So um, I'm Ed Canavan, um, and uh, my, I'm going to talk about the uh, ideal integrating bolometer uh, work that's uh, funded through the NASA SIF program. Uh, it's very much a collaborative effort with uh, my two very brilliant uh, co eyes, Al Kogut um, of uh, Observational Cosmology and uh, uh, Thomas Stevenson of the Detector Systems Branch. Okay, uh, our little company's uh, NASA Goddard Space Flight Center. Um, we were founded in 59. Uh, we have about a, an on-site workforce of about 10,000, about a third of those are, are civil servants. And our, our primary focus, of course, is, is a space flight center. We, we uh, develop um, missions and uh, instruments primarily for Earth and space science. So um, the, uh, I'll talk about the, uh, the motivation for this work, which uh, the, the key, chief motivation right now is in um, far infrared spectroscopy uh, for, uh, we're trying to get extremely uh, sensitive bolometers to allow uh, rapid, background-limited, high-resolution uh, far-hour spectroscopy, uh, for, particularly of galaxies at cosmic scales. Um, <coughs> uh, bolometers, as many of you know, are, are uh, detectors of radiation, typically in the mid through far IR, uh, that work by converting radiation to heat and measuring a temperature rise. Um, the uh, integrating bolometer concept I'll talk about attempts to circumvent some of the uh, limits on bolometer sensitivity, um, potentially allowing orders of magnitude improvement. Uh, the, the, the concept really has three facets. One is a uh, non-dissipative thermometer, which has been previously demonstrated at Goddard. Um, Another is uh, extremely isolating uh, support structure for the absorber pixel, and that's another um, another uh, SIF effort. And uh, finally, a pixel scale superconducting heat switch, which is the primary focus of this work. Uh, this is most definitely uh, very low TRL. Um, uh, the uniqueness of this, while macroscopic heat switches do exist, um, the, uh, to my knowledge, this will be the first pixel scale microfabricated heat switch. So, um, to, to give credit where credit is due, this, this uh, idea was really conceived about 15 years ago by um, Al Kogut, Harvey Mosley, and Mike DePiro. Um, the real Driving motivation, as I had mentioned, is uh, in, in the far infrared. The uh, far infrared atomic lines are the dominant cooling mechanism for the interstellar medium. Uh, in star forming galaxies, a significant fraction of the total bolometric luminosity is emitted in these lines, um, especially in the important elements such as carbon, oxygen, and nitrogen. And thus, um, because these lines are so bright, you can potentially measure the composition of, of galaxies at, at cosmic distances. And, um, and thus, high resolution far infrared spectroscopy could provide us with crucial evidence to, to help us understand galactic evolution. Um, however, uh, this, is, this is not easy. Uh, it requires very high spectral resolution, and in particular, uh, it requires uh, extremely good uh, detector sensitivity in order to resolve these lines uh, uh, without uh, blending or confusion. So <laughs> we're really trying to push the detectors to an NEP uh, below uh, 10 to the minus 20. And this would um, allow cosmological surveys um, in a reasonable time frame uh,
So um, conventional bolometer, as I said, is a thermal detector. Um, the, there's an optical absorber that's linked to a uh, thermal sink through a, a low uh, conductance or low G uh, path. The, uh, the temperature rise on the, on the uh, absorber is measured typically with a thermometer that dissipates power, such as a transition edge sensor or um, a germanium resistor. Uh, for for state-of-the-art thermometry, we're able to push the, the read noise down so that the resolution is really limited by, by phonon noise. And, and we're displaying this with a PC, which is going to be a problem. Um, anyway, the point is that it's proportional to a square root of the conductance G. And um, uh, so your highest res resolution can be achieved by making G extremely small. Unfortunately, G is inexorably linked with your uh, the detector's uh, uh, recovery time. And so you can't make G too small, particularly in, in high radiation environments or cosmic ray hits will, will blind your detectors or, or at least degrade them. And this is a, a current problem for, for Planck right now. Um, so with the ideal integrating bolometer, uh, as I said, we use a non-dissipative uh, thermometer to, to read out the, the pixel temperature. And so the the, the power onto the, onto the absorber is just the photon power. Um, and we put this heat switch uh, in parallel with the, uh, with the thermal path, with the uh, support structure that's, that's holding the, the pixel. Um, so we have a pixel scale heat switch and in its, in its on or closed state, the uh, conductance is much higher than that of the structure. In its off state, it's, it has to be less than the, conduct, the, the, the conductance. And so the, you have two time constants um, with your off time constant much larger than your on, to, on time constant. And this allows you to periodically close the heat switch dump the heat off the absorber. Um, and this uh, removes the limits on, on the conductance. You can now push your conductance to much lower values because any loss will just, any loss of data will just be within one um, on-off cycle. Um, also, at the limits of very low G, um, your your temperature rise is basically just the integral, the integrated uh, optical power over the, over the on-off cycle time. And uh, you can just measure the temperature at the beginning and end of each uh, cycle, and that gives you the, the difference, gives you the deposited energy. So, so how do you make a heat switch? Well, to get good conductance, you need a metal, because metals are the only good solid state conductors at low temperatures. Um, in metals, heat's carried. Uh, they're good conductors because they carry heat through electrons. Um, but superconducting metals, below their transition temperature, the, the uh, electrons get bound into pairs. Um, the pairs condense into a, a, a single quantum state and thus have zero entropy and thus carry no heat. Um, so at temperatures, far below the, the critical temperature, um, the thermal conductivity of uh, metallic superconductors approaches that of dielectric materials like your structure, such as silicon or silicon nitro. Um, on the other hand, you can apply a magnetic field uh, greater than the, the critical field, and you can break the pair, destroy the superconductivity, and switch switch the uh, thermal conductivity to the, to the normal state thermal conductivity. And uh, for aluminum, um, you can get about a factor of 10 to the fifth at 100 millikelvin in your, your uh, thermal conductivity ratio. 
So as I said, this, uh, this is not new. Uh, people make superconducting heat switches and, and macroscopic ones. We, we do it all the time and use them in our continuous ADR systems, our adiabatic demagnetization systems. Um, the, uh, what's new here is that we're scaling down to very low, small uh, sizes, and so thin film properties are not very well known. Um, the other uh, uh, thing we have to take into account is the condensation energy, and this is something we'll be studying. So, um, so we set up a little experiment, and our experiment is a, a chip with a couple of what we call pixels on them. Um, the pixel's uh, not really a pixel. It doesn't, it's not a, a radiation detector, but it does have a, an isolated on, um, island that's supported by four thin legs. Um, it has a couple of resistors on them. One we'll use as a heater, one is a thermometer. Uh, one of the legs is a little odd. It's got a thermal link on it, and then this part of it has our, our heat switch. So I said the island has two resistors. Um, one, of them's, uh, one of them will hook up to a uh, uh, superconducting quantum interference device, which is basically just an extremely low noise amplifier um, that lets us read the, uh, the Johnson noise and measure the temperature. Uh, it's not the, the fastest thermometer in the world, but if you have a squid available, it's relatively simple and cheap. Um, the, uh, the island, as I said, is linked through a thermal path, th through this thermal link to our, our heat switch here, which is just a strip of aluminum surrounded by a niobium racetrack coil. And then by, by driving current through this, the niobium, we generate a field normal to the aluminum and can drive it normal. So I said, one of the key questions we have to investigate is the, any dissipation we get in the switch. Um, and one of the ways we're going to do this is with, by uh, using uh, an idea from Carl Rostam, which he calls lab on a chip. What we've, what we've done is split the island in two and stuck one of our heat switches in between the two islands. And, uh, made sure the geometry is identical on both sides. And this allows us, since this, the heat switch is thermally isolated, to, uh, to easily measure uh, power in it. So um, the, we will, uh, plan is to uh, test our uh, device. We'll cool it to below 100 millikelvin with our uh, with a two-stage uh, adiabatic demagnetization refrigerator. Um, we will um, just do a, a simple conductance measurement, inject heat through, the, through one of the resistors, and, and as I said, use the, other, the noise in the other resistor with a squid, which we have right here, to, uh, to read out um, the uh, 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 Johnson noise and measure the temperature of the test chip, which is inside this uh, shielded box here that's, that's driven down by the ZADR. And of course, we can apply current to the drive coil and switch to the, uh, to the uh, switch the switch to the closed state and, and measure the conductance in both states. Um, so, um, we've uh, designed and produced the masks. We've run through our first uh, fab cycle um, last year. Uh, we ran into some <coughs> adhesion problems, uh, different, different particular adhesion problems, one at the aluminum gold interface, another at the uh, gold niobium interface. And that prevented us from, from completing um, last year. But uh, this year, we've modified our, uh, our design to reduce the number of layers. 
Um, we've produced the masks. At least the masks are supposed to be here. Um, uh, we've also changed our processes. We've uh, figured out what went wrong, eliminated the, uh, the problems that, that caused the, the uh, lack of adhesion. And we've actually gone th through and run process tests to confirm not only good adhesion at these interfaces, but, but low uh, interface conductance. And these are just a couple of SEMs, one showing a nice clean two micron niobium line, and another showing a nice clean two micron line that's going over a, a gold step with no gapping. So um, the test facility, we've, as you saw in the last picture, we've assembled it. Uh, we've uh, operated it down to 70 millikelvin. We've uh, tested the squid, and currently we uh, are reading out uh, noise temperatures uh, using a uh, resistor from a, an old chip that we had. So this um, little effort is, is part of a, a much larger effort to produce uh, IIB and, and in the long run to do far IR spectroscopy. Um, uh, as I mentioned, Another part of this, and that's, that's ongoing right now, that's funded through CIF also, is to produce uh, ultra-low conductance support structures uh, using a very clever idea some people call phononic crystals. Um, when uh, these two ideas are combined as the next step, um, we'll be able to produce a, an ultra-low conductance um, structure that has a swiss switchable conductance. Um, as I mentioned, Goddard has produced uh, magnetic, penetration uh, magnetic penetration depth thermometers, uh, but in the context of uh, X-ray microcalorimeters, which are, um, have a much larger, heavier absorber, uh, we'd have to uh, update that design to optimize them for uh, IR detection. Once we have those two elements, uh, we could finally combine them to produce the ideal integrating bolometer. And then, of course, once you have the, uh, you've demonstrated uh, the IIB, the next step, of course, would be to produce IIB arrays. Um, and I said, as this is, this is part of a, a longer range vision for far IR spectroscopy, um, one of the efforts we have going on right now, um, run by Harvey, Harvey Mosley, is to build a compact, uh, a compact far infrared spectrometer um, in a planar device. Um, so if the IIBs uh, give us the extremely good sensitivity that we need, we would combine these with the microspec and produce the, the compact uh, ultra-sensitive spectrometer that we're looking for. Um, there's another effort going on, this one uh, uh, led by uh, Al Kogut also, um, called Bobcat to produce a, a large aperture, lightweight, uh, four Kelvin telescope that can be lifted by a balloon. Um, once we have the spectrometer, we can, can use that with the, with the Bobcat uh, concept to finally do measurements um, with a balloon-borne uh, uh, telescope, far infrared telescope, and integrated spectrometer. And of course, in the long run, uh, the idea is this would lead to a, a far IR spectroscopy survey mission. So um, my very rough, quick, top of the head uh, uh, estimate to, to at least take the IIB to TRL3 um, is given here. Um, and why should NASA at least want to invest in this technology? Well. Part of NASA's mission is to uh, understand the uh, 
birth and evolution of the universe, and this is a, an important part of it, um, the richness of the far hour spectrum uh, and its potential wealth of information um, has been known for, for some time, but background limited measurements are, are still not possible at the longer wavelengths. Um, thus, the IIB effort has, is an important part of a larger effort um, and, and addresses this long-term need. And, uh, oh, I should point out that uh, another way of looking at this is that the, uh, the pixel scale heat switch um, is a, an interesting new tool in the uh, toolbox of uh, low temperature detector designers. Um, the, the conductance has always been a, a fixed parameter for all thermal detectors, and this will give you dynamic control. So the, te the technology is, is potentially useful in, in other types of devices at very low temperature. Um, one, one possibility is microcalorimeters, although we really haven't looked at that in any detail. And our, uh, I'll give you our our Goddard uh, chief technologist, this point of contact. He'd be able to uh, point you to any of these technologies. Um, and I think I'll, if we can skip ahead one more. I'll stop here, but uh, this is a, just a little advertisement for uh, my branch and my uh, co-eyes branch, uh, the detector systems branch. Uh, produces uh, everything from detectors up to full spaceflight instruments that cover uh, everything from millimeter to, uh, to, cosmic, to uh, uh, cosmic rays. Uh, they, they do uh, particle detectors, MEMS, everything. Um, and we, uh, we cool it all down. We built spaceflight uh, millikelvin systems. Any questions?